In this video, I'm going to describe some of our grasshopper tools that can help with the conveyor workflow. While Conveyor can be used purely within Rhino and within Revit, the Grasshopper tools do extend our ability to create parametric workflow scenarios that will allow us to stream different uh, Grasshopper geometries into Revit. As a point of setup, I have created a complex surface uh, inside of Rhino that will act as the base surface for some, some panels inside of Grasshopper. I've also gone through the exercise of creating a series of uh, contextual floor plates that I can import into Revit from the Rhino file along with levels and grids. If I jump over into Revit you can see that I've already imported in a series of these levels um, as well as the grids and if I look over at conveyor you can see that those objects are up to date with the Rhino file. I'm now going to import in the floor plates. So I'm going to go ahead and load those three elements in so I can have some floors in my Revit file for context. You'll also see over my project browser that I've created an adaptive component. Um, this adaptive component is based around four points and describes a very simple panel condition. Adaptive components are special types of families that are based around the positioning of points and the geometries that are attached to those points will adapt to those point positions. Adaptive components are very useful in describing uh, systems that have high degrees of variation such as uh, paneling on a complex facade. Jumping back over into Rhino now, I'm going to activate Grasshopper, and you can see that I have a basic definition already set up. It's referencing my facade surface and generating a series of panel objects using Lunchbox. I'm going to go ahead inside of Rhino and hide my base surface just so I have a clear view of my paneling configuration. And what I want to do in this exercise is take the panel geometry, which are a series of untrimmed surfaces, and assign them to adaptive components. Inside of the Grasshopper tabs, you'll see that I have a Proving Ground tab, which comes installed with Conveyor. And underneath the Conveyor tab, you'll see that I have a series of object types. These Conveyor objects allow me to take the raw geometry of Grasshopper and assign them to special classes of objects that can tell Revit whether or not something needs to be an adaptive component, a component family, a floor, a grid, and so on. We also have this ability to write external files that are compatible with the Conveyor plugin inside of Revit. So to start off, I'm going to pull out the Adaptive Component tool, which has a series of inputs for geometry uh, layer, which also refers to the Adaptive Component classification. There are a series of property values and display material options as well. Now the Lunchbox tool is set up to output untrimmed surfaces. The way that we're going to control adaptive components is through the use of polylines. Polylines are useful in the sense that they can describe an ordering of points that the adaptive components inside of Revit need in order to understand point placement. So for example, with this four point adaptive component, I have a first point that I need to set, second point, third point, and fourth point like so. So we need to be able to transfer ordered sets of information into Revit via conveyor to place these special types of components. So going back into Grasshopper then, what I can do is start to decompose these surface information um, into a series of adaptive uh, polylines that will be used to control the component. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Surface tab and I'm just going to do a deconstruct BREP which will give me access to the faces, edges, and vertices. I'm then going to get the edges of this and join them together. You can see that there are four edges per panel. Um, I want to join those together into a single polyline. So I'm going to go over into the Curve tab and um, find the Join Curves component. So we can join those together. And now what I have are a series of curves. Um, I'm also uh, looking at this and I see that I have a data tree. I really don't need data trees at this point. I'm simply going to be transferring flat lists of information over. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this uh, set of curves just so I have a series of polyline curves. And I'm going to insert those into the conveyor adaptive component here. I now need to define this layer. The layer name is going to be related to the adaptive object and it's going to refer to the family and type uh, as it exists in Revit. So if I go over into Revit, 
um, you'll see that I have my under my generic models category here an adaptive component PG panel four point um, and I need to be able to tell conveyor that I need to use this family and this type now in this case the family and type are identically named which makes it very easy for us to establish the family and type inside of Rhino and Grasshopper. So I'm going to copy and paste that information uh, into a panel, a Grasshopper panel, bit of text here. And the convention that we're going to use is we're going to establish first the family name, we're going to separate it by a colon, and then I'm going to paste the exact same name to represent the type. So we have family name, and then we have family type. And maybe as a bit of a reminder here, I will do family name, family type in the naming of my uh, my note here, just so I have a understanding of what's happening. And I'm going to connect that panel into this layer input. And what we'll see then is that the component will become active. And if I hover over elements, you'll see that I'm now generating a list of conveyor compatible uh, adaptives. So now that I have those established, what I can do is go to the Proving Ground tab again, and I'm going to author a conveyor file. Um, this will author an external 3DM Rhino file that you can open up and look at. It's kind of like baking to an external file uh, in a way, but in a way that has structured information uh, that conveyor can uh, understand inside of Revit and, and translate these elements. So there are a few inputs here that are important. First is a list of elements. So the elements are going to be my adaptive components that I've established. There are also this, uh, these inputs for IDs. So one of the tricky bits about Grasshopper as it relates to this conveyor workflow is that Grasshopper is not generating um, uh, permanent geometry uh, that have fixed GUIDs. And as uh, you can kind of see inside of Revit, when I click on one of these floors, for example, or one of the levels, um, it's expecting that we have these these GUIDs. Um, now, whenever I bake objects out of Grasshopper, um, those objects have different GUIDs every single time. So it creates this tricky data management scenario where we need to have something that we can rely on um, to tell an object that it is uh, kind of a, a persistent identifier. So when that object updates, um, we understand where that object is coming from. So what we do in Grasshopper is we have to establish a set of custom IDs. Um, and these are kind of up to the user to define and can be uh, very easily defined using um, uh, formatting components and lists of values. So I'm gonna do a format here. And I'm just gonna go in and uh, create a custom ID. I'm gonna call it GH panel. Um, open braces, zero, close braces. This will allow me to key in information from the zero input. And I'm going to go ahead and pass that here. I then uh, need to supply it with a list of, of data that will match the list of adaptive components. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a list length to get the total length, um, the total number of my adaptives. And then I'm going to use a series component to create a list of numbers using the, the length of this list of adaptives. And then I'm going to supply that list of numbers into the zero input. And if I hover over T now, what we'll see is that we are now getting this list of identifiers, GH panel zero, GH panel one, and so on. So this can become my identifier logic here, which I'm then going to connect in to the IDs. So I now have my panels and my IDs uh, streaming into this conveyor node. I now do need to establish a path. So a path is going to be re in reference to a file um, that this will kind of save and overwrite and update as we kind of modify our definition. So I'm going to go here and find our file path node. And I'm going to right click and set a new file location. And I'm going to call this complex panels demo dot 3dm like so I'm going to save that and pass that into the path the source here is going to refer to whether or not we're using imperial or metric in this case i'm using an um, kind of imperial settings inside of uh, our uh, a rhino environment so i don't need to adjust that and then finally i need to establish a write 
toggle. So this right toggle will be a true false value. Uh, you may choose to use a, a Boolean toggle such as this, so you can have it permanently set to true and always overwrite your values. Uh, or you can use a button if you wanted kind of more of a click experience. So click to update um, our external file here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass this in um, and it'll be set to false for right now. So now I have the basic setup. You can see I have my original parametric definition and then I'm formatting that definition, kind of preparing the information to create conveyor uh, compatible elements, describing adaptive components. I've described our identifiers, and then I have now set up this uh, path to re uh, write, write the file. So I'm gonna hit set true, and I'm gonna go back into Revit. So now that I'm in Revit, um, I'm gonna go to a front view here, I'm gonna go to my south elevation, and I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to that file that was created. So you can see we have complex panels demo. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And we now have this listing of adaptive components that are coming in. So once I have that established and once I uh, you know, have and verified that I have this panel loaded in, I'm gonna go ahead and click load Rhino objects. And what conveyor is going to do is it's going to find those types of panels um, as adaptive components. It's going to verify my model, and then it's gonna go through this process of creating and then placing our adaptive components. You can start to see that we're getting a status update on the state of the transaction uh, happening over here in the main conveyor um, file. And we also have a couple of temporary pop-ups that are uh, pacing, uh, placing our uh, adaptive components as well. Um, one of the ways that we're managing transactions as well here is we're considering batch processing of different elements. So it, it tries to go through, if I have a lot of adaptive components, it does uh, roughly about 100 at a time, uh, batches of 100. So if you have 150, you can expect it to do two passes to generate these. And that just helps with uh, transaction speed in our experience. So now you can see that we've placed our adaptives and our adaptive components are uh, positioned in this elevation view. Um, if I go back into 3D, uh, you can see that we, we've placed these adaptive components uh, at those locations. Um, so one of the interesting things that we can do here as well is start to study what happens when we update our parametric definition. So I'm going to go back into Rhino and Grasshopper, and I'm going to change up the divisions a little bit. I'm going to do fewer divisions. Uh, inside of Grasshopper. I'm going to take take these numbers down a little bit. We go down to 10 um, and maybe I'll bump this up to like 8 so we kind of change up our, our division scheme a little bit. So we can what we can expect then is that Grasshopper uh, will have reauthored our file. We had our toggle set to true over here in Conveyor. So that file is now up to date um, and it's happening more in this automatic way. So if I do a refresh here, what we're going to see is that our panels uh, are requiring an update. We have fewer panels than we had before, and then the previous panels have changed their position, um, which is important to note. So adaptive components are one of those object types that do go through, go, do go through updates. So uh, when a panel is updated uh, inside of Rhino, um, it then uh, triggers an update over in conveyor and then it will reposition the previous adaptive component. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit load. We have 85 elements this time. And so what it's going to go through is it's going to first validate and compare against the uh, adaptive components inside of the model. Um, and then it's going to go through an update process where it's repositioning those elements uh, according to their new location. And then what it's going to do is it's going to clear out adaptive components that are no longer necessary. So it's going to perform a transaction to delete uh, the unneeded adaptive components here. So you can see that we've now updated that assembly. Um, since I've gone through to fewer adaptive components, um, we can see that we've um, uh, you know have a lower resolution facade, which isn't quite matching up with this geometry up here. So maybe what I'll do is just one more time go in and increase our divisions once again. Uh, so we can see what happens when we increase the number of panels as opposed to decrease the number of panels. Well, we'll go to some configuration like this. And because we have that toggle again set to true, our, we can assume that our file has been updated. I'll go back here and I'll do a refresh. 
and we now have a new batch of adaptives. You can see that some of the panels are in the same spot, are considered uh, uh, up to date, and some panels do need updating in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and load these panels in. It's again going to go through a validation process um, against uh, from the previous panels to the new panels. It's going to go through then a conversion exercise. Um, it's going to place a couple of temporary ones off to the side um, and it's going to move everything back into its uh, new uh, position uh, relative to where, where things need to be. And it'll fill in some of the remaining pieces there. One more batch update and then we have it. So here's our newly updated uh, facade. If I go back to the south view, we can see that we have, uh, I don't need to save right now, um, we can see that we have our uh, panels that have been placed. And so with the, the addition of the grasshopper tools, the grasshopper tools expose this ability for people to take existing definitions and then build up these compatibility scenarios with Revit um, and allow for some degree of parametric updating uh, with Revit uh, using this conveyor logic. Um, as I mentioned before, Conveyor really did start from this premise that we're going to use Rhino files um, and, and Revit files directly. And then from that premise, we've built up a set of tools that, that allow kind of more advanced users that are familiar and comfortable with computational design software to build up definitions that give this kind of parametric control. Um, and this uh, parametric control is especially useful for things like adaptive component controls, um, where you're dealing with higher degrees of, of variation um, that tend to occur when you're dealing with Grasshopper.